objects in our scene, but these objects are not moving yet, so let's change that. In order to move objects around, we're going to be using the physics engine, and in order to interact with the physics engine, we need to use special nodes, and uh, there are a couple of special nodes that we're going to be using uh, to do this. Uh, and in this particular case, we're going to be using the rigid body because rigid bodies are for uh, applying forces. Um, we could alternatively use a kinematic body for animating uh, uh, objects that interact with the physics engine. And then there's also the static, static body, which uh, is for objects that don't move that interact with the physics engine. So in this particular case, we are using a rigid body. Now, our rigid body has a visual representation, which is uh, being handled by this player mesh node. So what we're going to do is we're going to parent that to the rigid body. And now it's got the proper visual representation, but we still need to add some a collision surface. And for that, we need collision properties to come from another node called collision shape. And it's got a property called shape, which is going to define our uh, collision surface. And you can see that that collision surface appeared at the origin and our ball is no longer at the origin because we, if you recall, we moved it up one unit. So let us uh, move it back to the origin and then move the entire player up one unit. And we'll call this rigid body player. And then we need to see how that went. So let's look at, oh wow. So we've got a player falling through the ground. We can correct that by adding some physics uh, to the ground. So let's create a static body. Call that ground. And we will parent a visual representation to that as well. And we will give it some collision properties as well. And then we will specify that the collision surface will be a plane. Now, you might think that this plane is not big enough for our uh, visual representation but it turns out that this plane uh, in practice is is infinitely large. That's probably a bug, and you'll see the effect of that in a moment. But um, for now, we'll just leave it like it is. Um, so let's test so far. Good, so now our ball is not falling through the floor. So now we've got some stuff here. We need to move it around based on input from the user so we will add some logic to our player. So here's our player. We'll hit this script button. Specify this is the player control. And we are extending the rigid body functionality. So we are um, taking the rigid body node and uh, using all of its functionality and then some. So that's kind of what this means. We're creating a derived class. Now, rather than me sitting here typing and watching me type this all out, um, I'm gonna cut and paste and then just sort of walk you through the logic so that you understand what I'm doing. But, um, and then I'll speed things up a little too. So here is the logic I'm gonna uh, just cut and paste over here. Um, I'll, I'll try to make this stuff available so people can do the same. But uh, So the first thing that we wanna do is um, 
control the speed of our player moving around. So let's do that with a uh, an attribute called speed or a property called speed. And we're going to use this export keyword here. And what that's going to do for us is inside this uh, editor, you can see that speed is now a property showing inside of uh, the inspector window and if we were to remove this that property goes away all right so that is the sole reason for doing this to get this to show up here so that every time we want to adjust the speed of the player we don't have to change it in the source code we can just change it in the editor okay, add some more uh, useful variables here this is just uh, this is a, a, a variable that we are, or a value that we have to pass to the uh, apply um, impulse function. And it just says where we are applying our force on our physics body. And we're just going to apply that on the origin. So we'll be using this later when we apply our force. Uh, for now, uh, let's move right along and talk about underscore ready which is called when our player enters the scene graph or the scene, uh, the node tree. And, uh, and so that happens at the very beginning of the game. So as soon as our player, um, as soon as the game starts, this gets called. And, uh, and so set fixed process gets set to true. And what that means is we get to um, have our callback called and it's a very special function called underscore fixed process and that gets called every physics frame. So the purpose of this is on every physics frame what we want to do is grab the user's input and convert it into a direction. So when the user presses the left or right key that is converted into a negative one or positive one value. If neither is being pressed, then we get a zero coming out of here. Uh, similarly, if the user presses the up arrow or the down arrow, uh, we get a negative one or one coming out of here. And if the user presses neither, we get a zero coming out of here. And so the, uh, those negative, those values between negative one and one are then mapped to X and Y in our 3D world. And then those values are used to create a direction vector. And uh, that direction vector is then normalized so that it's unit one. And it just represents a direction in which we want to send the player. We have a direction, but now we need a magnitude. And that is being uh, determined by this speed. And delta. Delta is coming from... Uh, it's being fed to us and it represents the time required to render the previous frame and so um, every frame is probably not getting rendered at the same speed uh, so this number is fluctuating but we want to make it look like the speed is constant which it is and so when this number is a little bigger uh, when when this number is a little bigger that means that the frames are getting drawn a little slower and so this speed increases a little bit when this is a little smaller that means uh, the frames are being drawn a little faster and so um, this uh, decreases a bit and so what the end effect is is that it looks smooth the movement looks smooth um, constant when it's supposed to be constant it doesn't jerk around when the, uh, the frame rate changes so uh, that is where our magnitude uh, is coming from. And so now we've got a magnitude and we've got a direction. And so now we've got a, a nice little vector here representing our force. And now we're just gonna add our force to the player, okay? Uh, if we take a closer look at what get access is actually doing, get access is actually doing, is uh, we can see here it does exactly what I said. Um, 
input is being used to grab uh, information from the keyboard and action is like a alias that 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 uh, uh, represents it's how you can map um, multiple devices to a particular um, name and so uh, in this case the name is uh, left which implies um, we're moving left and so uh, these mappings are maintained uh, at the project settings level and if we look at these project settings we can see that uh, UI down is the down arrow and this device zero button 13 and UI up is the up arrow as well as device zero button 12 and you get the idea so uh, that's where these um, these little aliases are coming from, and, and this basically, in our case, means the left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, down arrow. And then we get the output that we um, uh, expect uh, between negative one and one and zero when nothing is pressed. Add force. Uh, this is actually probably a typo. Uh, what this is saying is um, here's a vector coming in here, it has XYZ um, values. If these values are non-zero and if any of these values is non-zero and the physics object is asleep then please wake it up because we are about to apply a force to it and um, uh, these forces if you apply them have no effect if your physics object is asleep this is important because uh, um, sleeping is 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 set to on by default so uh, it's a it's a a performance feature where if a, if a physical object isn't moving around then it goes to sleep and it doesn't it's not involved in physics um, our objects appear in the middle of the world not moving so they appear sleep so we need to make sure that they're not sleeping when we apply these forces all right so um, if that is all working right then we should be able to play this guy and indeed we are moving to the left rather slowly so let us change that and we can change that very easily without altering source code and make that 30 times faster and so now you got movement and just like I said that plane is infinite so we can roll off of it and uh, the visual representation and we still have not fallen off the floor. Um, so, so far so good. Next we are going to try to uh, move the camera, have it follow the ball around.